So finally we are going to review this Aerox S155. So nakita niyo sa previous video ko. Um, binili namin to ng misis ko para service niya from home to school. So it's a bit big for her kasi yung late ni misis. Pero I mean, practice na naman yan. So finally, hindi ko na-review siya first nung kakabili pa lang. Kasi I want to experience it first. And uh, now, naka 1,000. Ano ba? Check natin. So 1,200. I'm not sure if you can see that. Medyo ano eh. Yun, 1,200 na yung odo niya. 1,219. Big sack. I think that's good enough siguro para makapagbigay ako ng opinion ko sa motor na tao, di ba? Kasi uh, I've done the first PMS, yung 500 kilometers, and I'm going towards the second. Um, siguro after, ang gagawin ko ay maybe mga around 1,500 or 2,000. Nag one month na yung scooter namin. Pero hindi ko siya binaby guys ha. Um, hard break in talaga yung ginawa ko dito Kung makikita nyo sa mga previous videos ko Nag uh, ride kami Long ride with uh, big bikes And with Ninja 400 With GSX 1000 GSXS 1000 With R3 And uh, with KTM KTM 200 RC 200 And I mean I can't complain Sobrang sobrang suwabe nya So Siguro before I give my my thoughts about this, quick spec muna tayo. Ang pinakamalaking Mio, the Mio Aerox 155. It comes with two variants, the standard version and the ABS version, which is the Mio Aerox S. And luckily, we got our hands on this white Aerox, which is only available Kung pipiliin nyo ang ABS version. Color variants for the non-ABS version would be Race Blue, Black Raven, and Vibrant Orange. Dalawang kulay naman ng sa ABS version. And that's gonna be the matte blue and white. And the engine is a 4-stroke single cylinder, 155cc single overhead cam with 4 valves. It has 14.7 horses and 13.8 newton meters of torque. It's liquid-cooled, it's fuel-injected, and has VVA. Oh, di ba? With blue core technology pa. Malakas na, matipid pa. Not bad, di ba? Sa harap is your fork suspension on 110 by 80 size 14 IRC tires and disc brake with ABS. Ang likod naman is a dual shock on a 140 by 70 size 14 IRC tire. Drum brake system with no ABS. And you have a 5.8 fully digital panel which is very, very visible during night and day. Makikita mo dyan ang odometer. Pwede ka mag-set ng trip meter. Tapos yung fuel consumption. And of course, your batteries. And keyless entry for the Aerox S variant. Yung headlight is also an LED and also your taillight is uh, an LED except for the turn signal lights on both rear and front. And ang isa sa mga paborito ko. Ang napakalaking U-box. Nakasya ang kasya. Ang malaking pack ng diaper. Mga daddies dyan. Alam nyo yan. And for your reference, here's an HJCC S15 XXL with a GoPro still mounted on it. And tingnan nyo. Kayang kaya. Very comfortable ang upuan. And makapit sa pwet. At malambot. Fresh ka pa rin after a long ride. The grip feels premium. And it's the very same grip on my R3. Kailangan mong patayin ang makina kung gusto mong pag -gas. And speaking of gas, eh napakalit ng tangke ng Aerox. Hindi siya long ride friendly. May electric socket na siya na pwede mo lagyan ng adapter para gawing charging port. However, bukod sa wala ng lock to, eh manghirap pang isara at ang liit ng compartment. Kailangan mo talagang idiin siya ng gusto para kumagat yung snaps. Your taho like pot pot. Your standard high and low without the passing button. And on your right is your idle stop switch. And your electric starter button. Now let's hear the exhaust. Mm -hmm. 
Seat height is at 790mm. Medyo may katangkaran but very manageable. I'm 5'6 and my wife is 5'2. But as you can see, it's not that difficult to handle. So now that I've given you a quick overview of the specs and some reference as well, here's my personal experience about this bike. After riding it for a total of a 1,200 kilometers. So starting with the rear suspension. If mag isa ka lang and you're just cruising at the normal speed, ay tama lang ang plane niya. However, if you are on the heavier side, or dinagdagan mo ng back rider, or mabilis ang takbo mo, at nalubak ka, ay eh mararamdaman mo kung gano'ng katagtag siya. Dahil na max out mo ang plane ng kanyang suspension. And yung front suspension? Walang kasing lambot. Parang joy bathroom tissue. Kamay ko pa nga lang ginagamit ko ay eh, parang mauubos niya yung plane niya. And worse is, pag sinakyan mo na, I'm around 80 kilograms and tingnan nyo kung gano na siya kakompress habang nakasampan ako. Dagdagan mo pa ng malubak na daan at ng bigat mo, eh talagang tutukod yung forks nito. Kahit nga bigla ang front brake ko, kahit na mabagal yung takbo, eh tumutukod na agad. And kung medyo mabilis na yung takbo mo, ganito yung play ng suspension niya. Kahit maliliit na lubak lang, eh halos na uubos niya yung kanyang suspension travel. Pero huwag kayong mag-alala, madali lang naman i-tune ito. Katunayan eh, sinabay ko to sa first 500 km PMS niya. Nasa 150 lang per tube ang calibration nito. Pati ang paglalagay ng grasa sa tipos para iwas kalawang ay pinagawa ko na rin. And also, isa plus na hindi ko nagugustuhan is the side mirrors. Parang... Ang hirap isingit. So masa parang sasabit siya sa mga side mirrors ng, ng kotse. Saktong-sakto siya doon. So if I were you, I would replace it with some something na yung dito or maiksi lang or mas mababa na side mirror. Yan, diyan tayo banda magsa-stop. Diyan. Tapos pa. Kaya natin 20. Stop. Hanggang lang. Try natin front brake lang. Front brake lang. Stop. That's front brake only. Neko, delikato to. Rear brake, walang ABS. Here we go. Walang ABS. Oh, okay. Hindi naman siya nag... Hindi naman siya nag ano. It's a skid. Try natin ulit. Testing out the ABS kung magsiskid if pipigain ko ng full ang front brakes. And napansin ko na hindi basta-basta mag-activate ng ABS on a dry paved road. Kaya we have to take it elsewhere. Para makita nyo kung gano'ng ka-importante ang ABS sa mga motor natin. Dinala ko siya sa damuhan. Sa mga nagmomotor dyan, alam nyo yan. Damo plus front brake is equal semplang. Kaya don't ever try this at home mga kids. Kung hindi nyo alam ang ginagawa nyo, I want you to listen closely on how the ABS works. Narinig nyo ba ang parang nag-vibrate na yon? Yun ang ABS trying to return the pressure sa kamay mo. Mararamdaman mo rin yan sa kamay mo na parang binabalik niya ang brake lever. Para hindi fully mag-lock ang iyong front tires. If this was a normal brake, eh malamang nag-skid na yung front tire ko. Now let's talk about torque. Sa katunayan, dito ako natutuwa sa Aerox. Kasi it has a very usable torque for the street. Mabilis umarangkada kaya madaling i-overtake. It's even torquey enough for me to practice my very first wheelies on a motorcycle. Ang dali niyang paangatin if marunong kang tumiming sa pagpasok ng hatak niya. Check out this video. Five, then medyo pop mo lang yung ano, yung f yung handlebars like this. Yeah, it's not that high, but. It's good enough. 
Oh, di ba? Not bad for a beginner like me. Next is, let's go with acceleration. One, two, three. Bana! Full throttle. 75, 76, 80, 90, 95, 96, 200. Damn. Okay. May curve dun sa dulo. Zero, go. Kaya natin kung abot sa 100 before mag curve. Pero hindi. Parang hindi! Abot guys! Woo! Sumobro pa! Yeah! Damn! That was fast! So yun, top speed naman tayo guys. By the way, I did the top speed when the scooter was about 300 kilometers pa lang. Hindi pa na for first PMS. So after the first PMS, I think there was a bit of an improvement. So maybe itatry ko ulit itop speed to. Tingnan natin kung may pinagbago. Pero syempre, it's gonna be on another video. Now, let's go to its handling. The Aerox has a wide tire. 110 on the front and 140 at the rear. The IRC stock tires are grippy enough if you're gonna use it in normal situations. Pero kung racing-racing and banking-banking ang gusto mo, then I suggest that you change it into performance tires for added grip and stability. And not to mention, you have to remove the center stand. Kasi mas prone ito sa sayad if you're gonna go into a really sharp corner. But for a rider like me, the stock tires are already good enough for my riding style. This is a fun and exciting bike to take on twisty roads on a weekend and still look fresh pag uwi mo. Kasi even if it's a sport-inspired scooter, a very comfortable pa rin ang seating position nito. For me, the only thing that Yamaha needs to improve on the Aerox will be the suspension and the rear brakes. But I know we can't have everything, so I'll settle for this. So, para kanino ang scooter na to? I think for intermediate riders, this is gonna be an upgrade. If you came from a 110, 115, 125 segment, then mararamdaman mo agad ang lakas ng hatak ng Aerox compared sa mga previous motorcycles mo. Even experienced riders will have fun riding an Aerox. If you're a big bike user who wants a daily motorcycle who can weave through traffic effortlessly, then the Yamaha Aerox is a good option for you. mag enjoy ka pa. Now what about beginner riders? Like, really first-time motorcycle riders? Well, it's very doable as long as merong magsusupervise sa'yo. Like my wife, this is her first motorcycle. Though she knows how to drive a car and knows proper road ethics, I medyo na e intimidate pa rin siya sa throttle response ng Aerox. Plus, she's only 5'2", so very tingkayad siya pag sumampas sa motor. Nakakabawas confidence din yon sa mga beginner riders. Pero kung gusto mo talaga ang Aerox kahit na first-time motorcycle rider ka pa lang, dahil mukha siyang jet ski, eh, then why not? Just get a proper coach for you. I would suggest to really work on the throttle control first for taking it out to open roads or practicing turns and U-turns. Alright, so that's my personal experience on this Aerox S155. And I hope na makakatulong to sa mga future users or nagbabalak na bumili ng Aerox. If may namiss ako or may mga tanong kayo na hindi ko na include sa video na to, then don't forget to drop it on the comments below. Alright, so that's it for this Aerox review and I hope that you liked the video. Don't forget to hit thumbs up and huwag kalimutang mag-subscribe. It's gonna be a big help. So thank you for watching and see you on the next vlog.